Mike Wilkerson here for the Fang Banger Podcast. I'm usually the co-host. Today I am hosting along with... David Carete. Uh, I'm usually the host. Today I am co-hosting because if you're watching this, you can tell I'm not there in the studio. I'm calling from my hometown, New Orleans, Louisiana. That's right. And it, you'll also notice inside this video that this tiny little picture that won't display appropriately but as it is David and he's standing in front of some plantation where he apparently used to own slaves or something I don't remember that part nice no that's Oak Alley Plantation one of the most beautiful plantations here in Louisiana um, it showcases some of the great things people associate with the area the giant old oaks and Spanish moss and of course the uh, pre-civil war plantation homes um, it, it's really nice, and I recommend anybody that comes down this way take the time to drive about an hour north of the city and visit. Uh, really excellent. But, I mean, the best part is that David is actually inside of New Orleans. In fact, the show doesn't even film in New Orleans. So it's great to have you there, David. And, again, thanks for taking the time away from your family to report and participate here in the Fangbanger feedback segment known as the True Blood Transfusion video-only feedback segment. And we appreciate you guys watching. David, let's get straight to the feedback and the news today from True Blood. First, we have Gina from Tampa Bay. Gina writes... Cool podcast, two guys. Found it over at true-blood.net in an article. Not too sure when you'll read this feedback, but what the F is going on with Lafayette's hair in episode 5? For the costumers to get Lafayette so right to go so wrong in this episode is, as you guys put it, goony. Keep up the killer podcasts and to death with that whiny bitch Tara already. Love and kisses, Gina from Tampa Bay. Well, I, I have to say right off the bat that uh, Gina sounds like she fits perfectly in with what we do at Two Guys Talking, <laughs> and she also seems to mesh perfectly with all of the opinions we personally have had. Well, and again, if you'll listen to our most recent podcast, which, by the way, you can listen to by clicking the link right above this one if you're at our Facebook presence. Otherwise, go to fangbangerpodcast.com, and you can listen to that audio podcast, as well as this uh, video-only segment. Um it's funny she actually mentions Lafayette's hair in there because I did too inside of our uh, our recent uh, review and I have no idea what happened. I do like what's happening with the character of Lafayette in this most recent episode, episode five. But you're absolutely right. I've uh, what happened there. I, I don't have any idea. Yeah, um, I, I think that you know all of the accoutrements that come with Lafayette <laughs> is uh, you know a gay chic gangster look. Um, they continue that on through all of the seasons so far. I think they're trying to step out and experiment a little bit, and hopefully it won't be a distraction. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Uh, again, thanks so much for your input, Gina, from Tampa Bay. We really appreciate that. A little bit of True Blood news. The first thing we have is a note from Nelson Ellis. Uh, I'm just curious, David, while you were traveling this weekend, did you won't see any of the Comic-Con-based news about True Blood? I, I have seen almost nothing. I believe I saw uh, a, a bit note about Pam, but other than that, no. Gotcha. Well, this note came across my desk, and I love this note. This is the kind of news that I want to see from Hollywood more often. And, again, you guys are going to pigeonhole me and tell me that I'm a prude and don't like sex and the rest of the stuff inside of True Blood, and that's not the case at all. The headline reads, I don't want to sign fans' boobs or be propositioned. Yes. Yes. How, what, why can't we have more of that from stars inside of Hollywood rather than the other end? We, well, it, it, I, I got to, you know, I'm probably the opposite end of the spectrum from you. I'm right. We, we know that you want, you want to sign boobies and be propositioned. We know. Right. I, well, no, but, but I, I don't have any problem with that if that's the way people want to conduct themselves. But a, a bit of decorum when you're with somebody you don't know. And when you walk up to somebody whom you see on a regular basis, on your television, you may feel intimate with them, but they're a stranger, and you act accordingly with the appropriate decorum when you're around strangers. If you want to have your boyfriend sign your boob, go right ahead. But you know, if, if somebody you don't know doesn't want to do that, well, you should respect them. Yeah, uh, I think that that's something that most people have kind of lost sight of because we feel so intimate with these people, and we think that the characters are the people when, in fact, we need to learn to detach ourselves a little bit from that. Yeah, it's definitely something that carried over from Star Trek with me. The, the characters that you see on the television in an episode of Star Trek 
are not the people that you're seeing on screen. And so going in all hyped up as a tech geek or uh, wanting to love somebody that loves everybody inside of the series, it, 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 it's not always that far from the truth, but often it is. Remember, this is acting, folks. And right. uh, again, my, my, my bottom line about all of this was that I was proud to see especially someone that has the character inside of True Blood of Nelson Ellis as Lafayette, to take a moment and just go, hey, just FYI, guys, time out. Uh, I don't care to sign your boobies, and I don't care to be propositional while I'm here at Comic-Con. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And I think, like I said, I think that extends to, you know, all manners of learn some learn some decorum and decorum. learn some manners when it comes to meeting strangers. Yes, I totally agree with that. Our next piece of input comes from Brianna in Portland. Brianna writes, Dear David, with two syllables, and Mike, I have to tell you, thank you for telling me slash your audience about HBO Go. Not only have I been able to catch up on the episodes you guys reference in previous seasons, but I also get to watch every week in my own study on my rather large monitor and skip the previously on True Blood BS. <laughs> I'm done with that. I, I, I totally agree with that, Brianna. And HBO Go has changed the way that I watch True Blood. Last night I did not watch it live on HBO. I watched it on HBO Go without, as, as you just stated, without the previously on True Blood BS. Because I will do that. Yeah. <laughs> I choose to not see it. She, uh, I she, had my first experience with HBO Go uh, just this weekend. Because whilst on vacation, I found it easiest to watch it on an iPad. Right, right. And again, another total push and success story with uh, uh, being able to do that. Uh, she also can, uh, Brianna also continues and says, have also started Game of Thrones and looking for From the Earth to the Moon on it. And wow, guys, I had no idea what I was missing. Thanks for helping a true, a true fan, a true blood fan, find true Nirvana via HBO Go. You are, you are more than welcome, Brianna, and it's, uh, of all these things that we do here at Two Guys Talking, whether it's this podcast, the Fang Banger podcast, or our Dexter podcast, or anything else that we do, the movie reviews, whatever, my goal is to educate you as a viewer of entertainment, period. I want you to look out for the writing. I want to give you those tips and tricks to try and, and have a better experience as somebody watching or participating inside of something. And so these little tricks that we throw you like HBO Go and how it can really be something uh, a center point for you that helps you save time, money, and effort. Uh, that is exactly why I podcast, really. Yeah, sure. Somebody who, um, under normal circumstances, wouldn't be able to partake in any of this. Um, either they are, you know, just too busy to be there at the scheduled time, or uh, the things pile up on their DVR. They don't really have time to sit down and watch it. But you know what? I have an hour lunch break. Yeah. Or uh, you know. Uh, I, you know, I ride the train home or I carpool with people. And you know what? I, I can sit down and whip out my smartphone or my iPad or whatever and, and watch it that way. It, it really brings these kinds of shows to people that sometimes wouldn't normally be able to watch them. Right. And again, it's a game changer. Being able to watch HBO and all of these other services, Max Go is now the most recent one to come alive and, and bounce off of all of this. All, all of those things are glorious and they allow you, empower you as a viewer of television and everything else. So please, please use them. Again, thanks so much for your input, um, uh, Brianna. We really appreciate that. News from Romeo Tarone. For those of you that don't recognize that name, you should, especially if you are a Dexter fan or, again, a, a True Blood fan. He is the director of photography on many episodes of Dexter, as well as the director both inside of this season of True Blood and the last season of Dexter. And the news that we just teased everybody with inside of our audio podcast, which, by the way, you can listen to via the link right above us here, is that... Uh, in fact, I'll, I'll just I'll read the note. It's it's more fun. Hey, Mike, only got to hear your review of episode one so far. I directed episode 409, which is the ninth episode of True Blood this season. And now I'm on Dexter season six, which I will direct episode 607. FYI, my episode of Dexter last season, Take It, was nominated for an Emmy for editing and sound. Talk to you soon, director Romeo Tarone. And the reason why this excites me so much is because I love people that make television and are just other people. 
yeah. Romeo is a perfect sample of that, and he, I'm, I'm very much hoping that he'll be able to review his, um, his episode uh, nine of this season of uh, True Blood. We haven't planned any of that out, but it would be so awesome if he could. And then again, during our Dexter podcast review of season six, if he would come on and review that one, he was able to do that inside of uh, season five, and it was so magical to sit there and review the episode that we had been doing for the entire season. Oh, but by the way, here's the director of the episode reviewing it with you. Magical. Magical. Yeah. And I can only hope that we can do the same inside of both True Blood and then our excursion via the Dexter podcast from Two Guys Talking into Season 6, Episode 7 with Director Romeo Troni. Again, Romeo, when you watch this segment, my thank yous for contacting us and letting us know that you've got more great content coming. Uh, next piece of input, Michael from Fresno. What is with David's icy stare into the camera each week during your video segment? <laughs> is he really just a blow-up doll that you do a ventriloquist voice for, Mike? Inquiring minds want to know. <laughs> In the same vein, Natalie from the God Hates Fangs podcast also wrote, Hey, Mike, firstly, I must ask, how the hell does David, not Dave, stay so still in the feedback videos? It's like he's glamoring me or something. <laughs> and you know what? He is. First of all, he is a blow-up doll. Second, it's a vampire blow-up doll that's glamoring you. Sorry, I hate to reveal everything behind the curtain, but that's what's going on. So enjoy again. Yeah, I, uh, aside from saying um, I, uh, I apologize for freaking you out, um, <laughs> you know, I... I I'm not entirely certain necessarily how to do the, uh, the, the, the video podcast is a little different than the audio podcast. And, and I, I gotta say that I, I feel more animated during the audio podcast than I do the video podcast. There's a camera on us for both of them, but it feels as though I'm performing for the, uh, camera only when it's trained on me. So, um, <laughs> I'll try and be a little bit more verbose and animated during the, uh, transfusion. Uh, since most people don't watch the live feed for the recording of the Fang Banger podcast. Right, right. And uh, again, Michael from Fresno and Natalie from the God Hates Fangs podcast, thank you again for your input. Uh, she, Natalie from the God Hates Fangs podcast, we've only got a, about a minute left. Um, she also writes, secondly, you asked whether there are wolfmen style werewolf creatures in True Blood. The answer is that there are not in the show yet. In the books, those who are tuned into the creatures... Uh, turned into the creatures through biting, like Jason, rather than through birth, become the half-wolf, panther, half-man creatures. Alan Ball, however, has said that he doesn't like this, so chances are that Jason will turn into an ordinary panther. Exciting. That's really exciting. Wouldn't it be even cooler if it wasn't just that, if you really had that moment where he does do the American Werewolf in London thing and does something different that isn't just a panther, especially because I've not been wowed by the panther effects this season. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, we'll see. I don't think that I don't think it takes away from uh, the, the, the impact of it with there not being sort of a, uh, to use a vampire, the masquerade term, a crinos or a mid-form, um, I don't think it really takes away from it. And quite frankly, I'd rather see them pour the money into continuing to write these incredible stories than to try and come up with special effects that they might fall short on. Yeah, I, I can't disagree with that. And again, another wonderful episode of the video-only fan feedback True Blood news segment from the Fangbanger podcast at Two Guys Talking. Again, all of you, please send your feedback to us. We get so much, we're definitely going to be doing an all-fan input episode like we have done with all of our other programs. So please, bring it on. We'll showcase what we can during the week. And thanks again for watching and listening. Remember, you can listen to the Fangbanger podcast review of the most recent episode of True Blood by clicking the link right above us here. I'm Mike Wilkerson, usually the co-host. And I'm David Carey, usually the host. And we'll talk to you next time on the True Blood Transfusion. Have a good night. Thanks for watching.